Okay. All right, we're going to go ahead and um, start the recording for the CHAMP grant instructional design meeting for March 2015. And then I want to be able to share my screen. All right. G give me a oh. second. Let me let me close this door or what I am because if not, I'm not gonna have peace. <laughs> okay. So, okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, new item that came up on um, Pete and I's uh, work items task list was producing a document that um, where we can, we actually have to um, give our opinion whether we know of courses that were um, courses or certificates that we know is actually in that the monitors might question. Um, we haven't actually got that sent up to Bitsy and um, Casey. Um, but if we have a question on something before we send that report to Bitsy and Casey, um, we're going to actually give you guys a heads up. Um, but I'm going to let, let me go through the agenda first and then let Pete talk about. It. So the agenda today is course statuses. Um, we, we all know we're working our finger to the bones. Um, and that's about all I can ha I can say. Uh, I'm developing eight new courses between now and the end of April. Pete's got 13 on his desk, and we might end up actually doing another five from Emily Griffith. Um, and that was a question is, I believe Donna and Diana are working full time. Is this correct? Yes. How about you, Donna? I'm retired, remember? <laughs> yes, I know you're retired, but I, um, the, what, the reason I'm bringing this up is because Emily Griffith will, will need to put their five manufacturings back on the development schedule. Um, and I was asked today, is there an instructional designer who can do contract work for Emily Griffith? So at first I thought it was going to be a woman from um, that I knew from um, outside, and then I thought about Carm, um, yeah, Karma. But I I don't know if either one of you know of anybody else who could do a, a short contract um, piece on doing instructional design. Yeah, the problem with me is that they will not hire me. No, System colleges or your office cannot hire me as a contract designer because I am currently an employee designer. So that's state purchasing rules. It's a total pain in the tail. So the only way I could actually do that would be if Emily Griffith hired me, quote unquote, for that. Um, now, which they might be able to do. Okay. Um, Ah, now, Pam's saying, you know, maybe a memo of understanding also between the two. So we could maybe look at something like that between the consortium schools. But the other piece would be, Karma is not doing anything for us right now. Okay. So she may be interested in doing something for Emily Griffith. Okay. So, yeah, we can talk about that, Brenda, if you'd like it uh, in a separate conversation. But, um, so, so yeah, there, there might be some opportunities either way there. Right, and, and right now the only thing that's holding me back from saying, like, give me numbers for a, an actual body <laughs> is the fact that um, Emily Griffith still does not have a finalized, revised, okay, finalized, revised budget, budget. for their work. Um, so until I actually get a revised uh, budget for their work, I can't actually say, okay, you need X number of dollars for instructional design for these five machining courses. Um, and that's kind of, but I, I just need to see if there are people out there willing to actually work contract through Emily Griffith um, to actually get these courses um, 
online. Yeah, that's basically what it is. So, um, Karma, and then maybe Donna. Yeah. Okay. Because the, the one that's actually contracted for CCD is struggling, um, just with the amount the fact that they're not producing content for her, so she doesn't have a lot of work to do. Okay. Um, does anybody have any concerns about their course builds, the two uh, colleges that are on, that we need to address or we can help you out with? I'm fine. Yeah, I'd say nothing you can really help me with eating content out of, you know, SMEs, so. Yeah, and yeah. And you might have with that, but I. We won't know until we know. That's basically what it is. Like, if you can shoot me, like, I'm working on these courses and it seems like the instructor's stuck, um, which is what happened to Ames. Uh, he wasn't last, last week. We sent over three courses uh, that we found for um, Ames on Skills Common. And yeah. she was like, yeah, I think that was last week. So we sent her over three actual cartridges from Skills Common, and she said she would be able to pull together at least enough information that um, the instructor could look over the material as well as make good choices make good choices about what to include into his class. Um, but yeah, if you give me an idea of what you need to do, Pete and I can um, go ahead and look for information. Skills Common is actually building out their stuff. There's a whole lot more there this month than there was last month. Um, so usually that's my first go-to now. Um, bringing up Skills Commons, um, Three weeks ago, uh, Pete stumbled upon the new terms of service in Skills Commons. It's super small. It is the sixth, one, two, three, four, five, six, sixth thing you actually have to click on and agree to service. We have stopped all uploads to Skills Commons until this has changed because 1.8 is an indemnification clause which was added, and yeah. right, exactly. We can't do that. Casey's notified both the FPO in Dallas, as well as um, Gary Hanley of Cal State, who's actually managing the Skills Common site, saying, we because we already put it through uh, in, first part of February, we put it through our legal department, and our legal department gave us a nice little write-up saying, absolutely not, this is why. Um, and then Casey forwarded that on to the FPO and um, Gary Hanley. So I'm hoping that um, we should have an information. I was telling Pete, it, it's going to take them at least three weeks to decide what to do with it. Um, and so I'll touch base with him in another two weeks. So we shouldn't post anything until then? Do not post anything until there. And I will send out this slide deck. I'll actually send out this slide deck that will say we cannot, uh, due to CCCS is legal, we are holding off uploading anything else to Skills Commons until the indemnification clause gets um, taken care of. Okay. Um, but prior to that, um, if you look at the course playbook, I've got the OER. Hopefully you guys can see this and it's not too squishy. Um, the first tab of the playbook has OER URLs. And up until March 1st, anything that was in the TAC drive, Pete and I were responsible for putting up into OER. So if you have a course, uh, I'm going to take uh, Front Ranges, MAC 101, it was 101, right, uh, Diana? Yeah, 101. Yeah. Yeah, that, that one, we, we, no, that one is still on work. I'm working on that one. I'm probably going to finish it tomorrow. Okay, you sent me three courses, though. It was 100. 200, and 205. Okay, so if we look at their MAC, um, let me, um, 
they're MAC 201, right? Yeah, 201 and 205 and 100. Okay, you'll see on the, the thing that Brenda has a course in Skills Commons, but it's not published, meaning that I've got it sitting up there waiting, but until the indemnification clause comes over, it's not actually going to have a URL. So okay. I've actually documented the fact that it's it's waiting in queue up there. You don't have to worry about it. Um, so anything as of March 1st that was in the TAC drive, I will have taken care of the URL, the OER publication, and I will, at the end of, whenever I get the indemnification thing done, fixed, I will then go ahead and publish all of that and then send you out your course's URL so you have it for your, um, your monitoring visit. Um, so you'll be able, able to include it on your intellectual property list. However, if by chance this thing drags on and you don't have anything published out into Skills Common, but you do have stuff published in SlideShare or YouTube, you can list those on your intellectual property list. Still maintain your intellectual property list, whether it has an OER URL or not. Just keep adding to what you've done. Like, um, uh, Pete and I went to some place um, and actually created a, a slide deck. And so that's up in SlideShare right now. And so we've got the URL posted somewhere. A quick question, Brenda. Uh -huh. About um, our navigator, you know, that she has to put this stuff on a skills commons as well. Yes. So depends on what she actually has. Um, like I think flyers, I answered some um, pamphlets and stuff like that. Sometimes the best place to put that stuff is not necessarily uh, a flyer or a pamphlet is probably the best place to actually put in Skills Commons. But if she's doing a slide deck, a presentation, she can actually upload that to Skill uh, to SlideShare and have a URL for that. Yeah, I don't think she has any presentations to be honest. Okay, okay. I think but, it's mostly that stuff that she printed out to hand out. Okay, but what she should have, even if she has not been able to publish that to Skills Common, she should have a listing that looks like this. Yeah, she does. The intellectual property list. Yeah. Okay. Then but if she the have a URL because that's yeah. okay, and and you can refer her back to the fact that until the indemnification clause gets. Uh, Resolve. we can't put anything into skills comment. Okay. But by the end of the grant 2016, it's going to be there. Okay. So what about if, okay, if the visits come here and we don't have anything, you know, on skill comments because we, we were not able to do it, there's no problem with that? It will not be a problem with that because you will have listed that stuff on your intellectual property list. Okay. Like for your personal intellectual property list, you should have MAC 101, oh no, MAC 100, mm -hmm. MAC 201, and MAC 205 listed. Uh-huh. And if you've produced anything else, a video or whatever, you've got that listed with the YouTube URL. But I mean, okay. for your intellectual property list, you should be listing everything that you've actually created so outside of the D2L shell. Oh, okay, now that's what I was gonna ask. So anything that is outside of the D2L shell, I have to list it, but if it's just like a course that have a bunch of stuff in D2L, then I don't have to. It's I would list course. it, well, yeah, you'd list just the course. Okay. Okay. And then I'm listing two places. So I'm listing that it's kept, you know, where we have the the hard copy. So I have a copy of it on the TAC drive. And then once it gets uploaded into Skills Common, I have a place to put the OER at. So, you know, you can have it listed where you're actually storing it right now on the on our own server or hard drives. But then eventually you'll be putting in all the Skills Commons OER. Uh, Actually, you know, well. I've gotten totally confused now. Um, I was only talking about the actual playbook 
what Pete is talking about is your individual intellectual property list. Pete, do you have yours up? No, I don't. I can pull okay. it up, though. No, that's okay. I can pull mine up. Yeah. What, what I'm talking about right now that's important to you is that anything that you would put in the TAC drive as of March 1st, I'm responsible for getting it published out to OER into Skills Common. And so I actually have the course sitting waiting in my own queue, waiting to publish once the uh, indemnification clause gets over. However, at your respective colleges, you need to be maintaining your own intellectual property list where you're listing everything, including your courses that you've produced on your campuses. And that, that actual piece of paper should look like um, so I need to have one general one for the college, like including everything, courses, what the navigator has done and everything? Uh, okay, if it's not you, Diana, then it has to be Ruth. It has to be, you have to have every, every single person who's producing something under the grant should have their own intellectual property list and it has to actually go on one list where the school the project lead can say, okay, this is a list of all of our intellectual property lists. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So I just take care of mine. Theoretically, you could. You yeah, could. I'm, I'm as long as you train, anybody. right, as long as you train um, Jennifer how to do it, and she reports whatever she's done back to Ruth so that Ruth has a one compiled list. Yes. Here at the system office, Pete has his own list, but I have the list for Casey, Bitsy, Maryland, Sylvia, and any other extraneous things that's happening in the building. I'm the one who's maintaining that list as well. Okay. And I'm maintaining it on the exact same um, workbook because otherwise it's too confusing for me. So my workbook has different tabs. So. My OER URL links. I have the advisory meeting presentation, the instructional design meeting. I have sticking points, tips for advancing PLA stuff. These are presentations and MP4s. I have course URLs that I've got in here. Okay. So my actual CHAMP OER for everyone except for Pete is on here with okay. different tabs for different areas. Does that make sense? Did I yeah. confuse you further? Okay. No, 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 I'm, I'm fine. Okay. Um, so, indemnification clause, make sure everything is at least documented, the fact that you actually have a document that states what was produced with grant funds for everybody in your organization, whether Ruth, your project lead keeps it or everybody keeps their own and then puts it all together so that you know where it is. Yeah. Um, and make sure you actually document, well, let's see. Um, document where it's at. Because like all of my stuff is listed as out in SlideShare, but the actual main repository is in our P Commons drive. So I've listed the fact that it's actually in our P Commons drive. Oh, okay. so that's where the original copy is, and the actual OER URL is out in uh, SlideShare or YouTube or um, wherever I still common wherever it is. Um, and that's a bit about it for it. If you have a question, don't hesitate to ask me. Okay. Um, Archer's publishing to OER became the CHAMP college responsibility. This is where, Diana, uh, there was some confusion. If CHAMP college has an ID, the idea is to facilitate the publishing to OER either by training the person how to do it or completing the task themselves. So with me, it was just easier instead of training Casey, Fitzy, Maryland, and anybody else who's touching CHAMP stuff, for them to just send me the stuff and I just complete the task myself. 
Um, but on some campuses, it's easier to train, like uh, Ames has trained their navigator how to do it themselves. No, I'm so, not training, I'm doing it myself. Yeah, they don't have to worry about it. Um, Pueblo has trained their navigator how to do it. So it just depends on what works for your um, your your campus. Yeah, that's too micromanaging for me. Um, did we have anything else, Pete, that we needed to go over? Um, did you want me to touch base on the um, the, the very first slide you had where we were talking about uh, the course status, right? status. Okay. Do you want me to? Sh are you? Do you have it up so you can share your screen? Um, I don't. Or I can just give you mine. Here, I can give you mine. Okay. I think if you could scroll down to the definitions, and that's really where we want to. Be. <coughs> so as. As we're preparing for the uh, uh, possible site visits um, from uh, DO, DOL, as it re um, regards our courses and what we're doing with our programs, they're kind of looking at it from a tier perspective. So the, the evaluation and what they're really looking at starts at the program level. So they're looking to- Can, can uh, you repeat that, please? Sorry, I couldn't hear you. What was it? Oh, they're looking to the, they're looking at evaluating how we're complying with the terms of the grant. They're starting at the program level because all the, the programs are either, you know, were redesigned specifically for the grant, in which case it, that's sort of the ideal situation. Um, otherwise, if you have existing certificates or programs, that's going to get a little bit more scrutiny because they're wondering, well, what have you done to those programs in order to make sure that you're not just supplanting the money that's been given to you by the Department of Labor, but you're actually using it to meet the terms of the grant. And so as you're, when you're looking at it, and we did a review of the courses, and so I think that um, you guys are actually okay because the things that you're working on, we know that you're working on these, uh, the, the courses themselves, they may not be complete, but there's certainly a, a movement in that direction. Um, but you want to make sure that the courses that you're that you're dealing with meet some sort of level of evidence where you can actually prove to the Department of Labor, here's how we spent the money, this is why this course qualifies to be a CHAMP course. And so there's either new machines in the course that were purchased with CHAMP dollars, so those dollars that actually touched that course in that way, or there's new curriculum. So what we're working on now in terms of either doing the hybrid or um, web enhanced delivery, kind of rewriting the curriculum and making it 80% instructor created material, that's OER, that's that curriculum piece. Um, it's assumed on our end that if you have new machines, you're probably getting new curriculum, but I think at, when you're looking at it from the Department of Labor perspective, they're really just looking to see that those grant dollars have actually been used to meet the terms of the grant. But, so that kind of makes sense as we're going through and doing this review process of the courses, that's what we're looking at. Um, and we really want to make sure that's not going to cause confusion as this stuff comes down from the project leads and hits you on what it is that we're actually looking for and how we're looking to evaluate the courses at this sort of midterm state. Let's take the example of CAD 101 at CCD. Can you okay. work, work through the, the thought process on that? So CAD 101 is um, in the associate's degree. It's also in a certificate in engineering graphics. So if you can see at the top uh, uh, banner headline there, that's where the three credits are. So that's a certificate that already existed. So in order for them to say that it had anything to do with the CHAMP, you couldn't be counting students in that right now because it just looks like you've taken the CHAMP dollars and you're going to be saying that, well, these certificates we used to have are the same ones and now we're just going to count those as being touched by grant dollars even though we haven't done anything to those courses or to that certificate. And so then they're going to be looking at, well, so you must have changed the courses within that certificate CAD 101 being one of those courses, 
how has that been changed? We know that there, that Pipes Peak created a master course, that there's one in the TAC drive, but the question then becomes, is your instructor actually using this course? So if the um, person from the Department of Labor were to actually ask the instructor teaching the course, how's it going with the new course delivery and are you seeing different outcomes with your students because of the redesign of this course? And they're not teaching a redesigned course, I imagine their answer is going to be, what are you talking about? Um, which probably won't go over very well with the Department of Labor. So does that kind of make sense that you want to, even though we have the master course there, regardless of how you may be using it on your campus, we would want to see CAD 101 at least being, or at least incorporating some point of the redesign or some new information or some new uh, aspects of it that we would see in the tax drive. So Diana and Donna, does that make sense how we're looking at these things? Yep, kind of. <laughs> well, it doesn't okay. make sense because it's the Department of Labor, but you know, it makes sense. <laughs> I think the big thing for them is they want to make sure that we're not supplanting their dollars, that they gave us, you know, a million dollars and we didn't just say, great, thank you, and look, this is what we've always been doing and thanks for the money and we're not going to really show you how we spent it. Um, so they're looking for that evidence of change and they, they kind of have a, a their master plan of taking over the world with their new courses, right? So, but their master plan, we're, we want to make sure that it kind of aligns with what they're trying to do and that's what they're looking for. Yeah. Okay, and Diana, does that make sense? Yeah, there was just a bunch of noise in the background so I couldn't hear really good. <laughs> okay. So with you, Diana, most of your courses, you're, you're touching all of those courses, and then there's the non-degree ones that are coming through, but all of those are related directly to the, with the grant. So as we see, when that curriculum comes to us, we'll be, we'll be fine, but they wouldn't have been developed without the grant in the first place. So they're not gonna be a big red flag. We just haven't seen the curriculum for those yet. So we're assuming that's coming, um, but that, at this stage, because it's only halfway through, we're not looking at the end product just yet. Yeah. But like for Pueblo, not that we're picking on anybody else, but MTE 106, print reading for manufacturing, I haven't heard Jerry talk about the fact that she's struggling to get material for MTE 106. I haven't heard that they've bought any new materials for it, any new machines for it. So, number one, is it being touched and redesigned? Has it gotten machinery or something? Was it included in a new certificate? Like, none of those questions I can actually answer. So that's why it's on our question list. Because how do we know we should be counting students in that course? Because they're CHAMP affected. So that's one of the questions that would come back to Pueblo saying, okay, we've got this list of eight, nine courses. Tell me what's going on with those. And most likely Jerry's going to come back and say, well, ELT is be de being developed right now. ELT 289 is being developed. Um, Mac 256, we bought a new camera for it. You know, they can actually go, go down and list what are the evidence that's affected by CHAMP. Um, it's just that we don't know about it right now. And that's all we have. Do you guys have any other questions? Nope. Okay. Cool beans. All right. So we will let you go. Don't hesitate to ask if you need anything. Um, I'm going to send out the slide deck on Basecamp. Uh, so you'll actually have the, the indemnification clause right in front of you, and if you need um, if you need anything before that, let me know. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. I don't think we have anything else going on, but your project lead should be getting information on the monitoring visit on the um, project lead meeting on the 23rd. I think they're, uh, Fitzy and all of us are pulling together information to help them set up a whatever they need for the monitoring visit. Hey, is the um, CHEO meeting, uh, is it canceled for sure? As far as I know, it has been. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. That's it. Thanks, guys. All right. You guys have a good day. You too. Thank, Thank you. you. Talk to you all soon. <laughs> all right. Bye. Bye. How do I get out here?